Good morning, my dear students. Today, we will be talking a very important subject, the anatomy, anatomy and histology of bone. We have already discussed many things, and I has already stressed this point that the importance of the anatomy. Let us start this anatomy from the bone because the orthopedic surgeon basically deal with the bone and joint and ligaments and tendons and so many things. But most of the time it is related to bone. Let us know the anatomy and histology of bone. Now, uh, what are the function of this bone? Bone is basically a connective tissue. So it necessarily serves some purpose also, as you have seen. And it serves the attachment for the muscles. So muscles, while doing all functions, it have to have an insertion and origin from where it can walk. So it has an attachment in the um, muscles. Muscles has an attachment in the bones. And with this help of this attachment, it can exert various types of function. So it also gives the protection to the various important structures like the brain, like the bone, then the lungs and it, um, your, your heart by the uh, ribs and the pelvis. Pelvic organs are being also being protected by the pelvis. So it, on the other hand, it is a reservoir of the various minerals and particularly the calcium. Calcium in the form of the hydroxyapatite. So well now there is one of the reservoir of the calcium is the bone and it is a research source. So whenever the body needs this calcium for the circulations for the important purpose, so there is a depletion of the resource and just leads to osteoporosis and other things as you know. So what are the different types of bone? Normally in the bones we do have 260 plus minus two, three bones, but Essentially, these bones can be classified in two groups from the shape. One is long bone, another is flat bone. So the long bones formed by the endogen, basically these long bones, the tibia, femur, upper limb bones, humerus, all the bones, long bones are mostly developed by endocondyl, endocondyl ossification. Primary centers of ossification in the shaft or the diaphysis and secondary in the ends of the bone, usually. Sometimes one, sometimes two, sometimes more than this that you know because in the humerus also you can see so many secondary centers there in the distal end of the humerus. So flat bones like your pelvic bone, like the scapula, mostly they are formed by the uh, membrane ossifications and one exception in long bone you all know, the clavicle which is developing by the uh, your membrane ossification. So, as such, this bone, in long bone, can be uh, have uh, can have a three parts. One, as you know, this metaphysis, uh, sorry, diaphysis, metaphysis, and epiphysis. So, epiphysis is the tip, usually the ends of the bone, and it's basically uh, it's a basically articular part of this bone which form joints. And usually, this part of the bone is be, is developed by the epiphysis by the secondary centers. So then comes the your metaphysis. Metaphysis is a, actually basically a, basically a, a cancellous type of bone. So this is the junctional bone part of the bone between the epiphysis and the diaphysis. And most of the diaphysis are cortical thick bone. Most of the diaphysis in the middle part is cortical thick bone and often it is developed by the primary centers. So diaphysis, metaphysis, and epiphysis are the different parts of a long bone. So this is a longitudinal cross section of the bone in showing different parts, it is the humerus. So this is the epiphysial part here, this is the epiphysial part and diaphysis part over here. So this is a cross cross sectional view showing the spongy bone in the inside, the compact bone goes a little tiny in the outer part of the diaphysis and sometimes sometime, this, this is the articular cartilage that is in the upper part. So in the diaphysial part, this is the picture here. So you have the periosteum here, then the middle cavity in the inside, then you have the endosteum. So this is filled up with your yolo bone marrow most of the time. And outer part, you have the cortical bone, most of the compact bone. And there, this is being covered by the periosteum where you do have the vessels 
are coming from. Yes. So this is a gross cross-sectional view of epiphysis um, and diaphysis. So in the epiphysis, so how it gets the blood circulations? As you all know, there are basically two types of blood circulations in long bone. One is endosteel vessels network, another is peristeel network. And it has got very important role, and basically they are compensating each other in a case of crisis. Supposing there is a patient stripping or there is injury to the front, then there is a, it's, it's compensating. Usually, outer part is being supplied by the uh, peristeel vessels, and inner part is basically supplied by the uh, endosteel vessels. Uh, endosteel vessels, most of the time, the nutrient artery is the contributor to the endosteel network. So in the, in, in, this is the nutrient artery which is piercing. So piercing into the bone and they also form this network of endosteel vessels in the inside. And that is a that is a research source of your blood supply uh, on the inner side. Outer side you have the periosteums which is also being supplied by the nearby vessels and also the muscles at the speed. And this also supplying the outer part of the uh, bone. Uh, any case of crisis that is compensating to each other. That means if the endosteel network is gone, that is, uh, that is being filled up or is compensated by the supply from the periosteal vessels. So these are compensatory to each other in a, in a situation where it arises. So what is the microscopic bone types? So woven bone, mostly woven. Woven means un, un, uh, it, is not, it is not stratified or it is not smooth or it is not irregular. So the immature pathological bones are poorly organized. Not in the stress oriented. Stress oriented means see, uh, you know, trabeculis are there in the long bone. Trabeculis actually shows the condensation of the bone of the line of your stress, that the old law. According to your law, that the area where there is more stress, there is more compression of the bone taking place, and this is more compression of the bone that is in the cell, uh, this is the, this is according to the old law. But this, in the case of the woman, uh, uh, this uh, your orientation is this law. Though there is chaos there, there is tissue, cells are there, everything is there, but even it is not organized properly, and it's not in a person way. So it is called oven bone. But mature bones are highly organized in this stress oriented. As I said, so long bones, you will get the trabeculate patterns, it all indicates this line of stress. But the mature cortical and cancellous bones made up of laminar bones. So they are organized. So laminar bone, which are seen in the, uh, your uh, mature bone, normal bones are organized bone. They are in a very systematic way. They are forming in the uh, form. Okay. So this is a picture showing this laminar pattern. So uh, this is one part is called, called osteon, the Heberson systems. So these are the layers which are surrounding this in your lamina. So in the in between the lamina, we have the lacuna. This is the lacuna here. So the end in the, in the side in in, in, your, in our part the, in the Heversen systems we have the we have this Heversen canal. So the central canal here surrounded by the laminar bones and the, in between there also between the, we have the lacuna. This is the osteon or Heversen systems microscopy seen in the in the laminar bone. So structures of the cortical bones mostly strong dense bone constitute 80 percent of skeleton so the most of the bones which are bearing weight are where weight bearing bones are very strong and is constituted by the dense bone and is a cortical bone and they are essentially composed of your some multiple osteons osteons are made up of concentric lamina with the central canal as i shown there in last pictures as cross sectional view the haversian system is the central canal with the lamina pattern Containing the end the cell which are there, we have the osteoblast and some of the osteo osteocyte also which are missing. So this is another picture with the structures of the cortical uh, compact bone where you can see the various there. So this is your previous term on the other side, it is mainly the inside. And we have these all the layers of those uh, diversion systems here and the differential switch are going, and they are going, capillary systems are going through the, through the Haversian canal to supply it. So, and also, this is intercommunicating to each other is called Bachmann's canal. So, so one central canal here, another, uh, another uh, uh, systems here, so they are also interconnecting to each other by the Bachmann's canal. So this is important. So nutrient artery is coming, from the outside pierce in the periosteum and the cortical bone there and it is going into the middle cavity, this is the endosteal network. 
So this is endosteal network. This is the periosteum. This is a laminar patterns of the bone, and you have the central channel. So and between this, we have the communication by the Hopkins canal. So this is big picture. All you mentioned, who is the laminar pattern of the bone in the microscopic picture. So this is another microscope picture showing how exactly it is seen in the microscopes at the circumferential origin. So this is a laminar bone, which is nicely organized, and it is being seen in the high uh, high power microscope. So laminae are connected by the canicular as I saw, lined by the outer limit of osteons, cortical bone, from the epicell bone of the bone. Hopkins canal, as I saw in the last picture, is communicating between the two. So they are also giving the communications to the arteries, arteries to supply. So this is the arterial network being uh, network being enriched with the Hopkins canal. So structure of the canal, cancellous bone. Now it is the cortical bone. What and I am going to tell you the cancellous bone. So cross lattice structures make up to 20% of the skeleton. So most of the time the bones are cortical. Rest is 20% is your cancellous bone, spongy bone. High bone turnover rate, bone is reserved by the osteoclast in the house of laconi and form a below opposite side of the body. So this is the idea that, 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 that since only organ in your body is also going for turnover. Always old tissues are being replaced by the newer one and this turnover mechanism is going on all throughout your body including the bone also. The turnover mechanism is also being done with the osteoclast and the osteoblast. So osteoclast used to remove this, remove this and osteoblast is going to lay. So that is the turnover mechanism is going on every time, everywhere in the body. But when there is your imbalance between these two, that leads to osteoporosis, as you all know, we'll talk about that mechanism later on. But as of now, that all the tissue, a living tissue in your body is always going for a turnover mechanism. And this is no exception to the bone also. They are also, this is a turnover is going on where osteoclast is removing osteoclastic name. So osteoporosis is found in the case where there is imbalance between these two. So this is a, as I, in the last previous film, we have shown about the cortical bone microscope picture. What about the pictures of, a, of, of the cancellous bone? This is the cancellous bone network. Cancellous bone is also organized that way. But even then, their bones are not compact like this in case of, uh, in case of your cortical bone. So this is organized, but here inside the network is same with that of your uh, cortical bone also. But as such, grossly, this is being shown like this. <coughs> Some is cancellous bone, which is organized. So you also have the uh, lacuni uh, containing the vessels. Laminar pattern is also there. There is a canaliculi, osteons, periosteums, only things are there. But uh, unlike uh, this is seen similar to that of your cortical bone also, but it is very sparsely present. So now let us go to the, go to the further, further compositions of the bone. What are the constituents? We have discussed about the, um, about the microscopic pictures of the cortical bone and also discuss about the microscopic pictures of the cancellous bone. What about the composition of the bone? What are the things that come from the earth? So it is basically two. One is your inorganic, another is your organic substance. So what are the inorganic? Inorganic mostly actually, actually these are the minerals. So as, I know, as, as you know, the calcium is a source of calcium, which is uh, entrapped into the bone, is in the form of a calcium hydroxide. Also, also calcium, phosphate, other, other many my, my, my small quantity, rare minerals are also, and manganese, uh, etc., zinc are also there. But primarily, it is the calcium and phosphorus, which is the, the constituents of the inorganic part of the bone. So organically, what happened? What are the things there? There is a network. The meshwork is being formed by the organic part. And where do you, in the meshwork, this is your inorganic things are being entrapped in to make it more solid. So there is a network there. <coughs> the network is formed by the organic material. And in between the network, we have this inorganic substance there to make it more consolidated, acting as a cement. So uh, this is your collagen. Uh, what are the part that uh, constitutes the, or the organic one is the collagen. 
proteoglycans, non-collagenous protein, some cells, cells, we will talk about this, and water is around 5% of the body weight is the water there. So you have, it is uh, surrounding by the periosteum layer and the inner side with the endosteum. So this is your microscopy. Now, what are the inorganic things? Inorganic things we have talk inorganic phase, the, the approximately 60% of the body weight is actually inorganic. Inorganic, as I said, <coughs> these minerals, <coughs> mostly calcium. <coughs> calcium hydroxyapatite is primary mineral in the bone. So this is very important because the network is being done by the organic, organic stuff, uh, 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 organic part. But in between this, between the network, it is being consolidated by the uh, uh, inorganic substance. So it is a compressive strength and uh, <coughs> besides is secondary mineral in the bone. So what are the organic things? Organic collagens. Most of the time, 